Admiral. Admiral. There you go. So you're waiting for the fish oil to make the full trip. Got it. So we just need more fish oil. Admiral. Admiral. Oh, man. Am I ever going to talk to you in a second? Um, let's do fish oil. We'll do one more right here. All right. Land of Lions. Uh, let's actually do this really quick. All right. Land of Lions. Let's rock. What do we got? Ooh, fancy map. The journey to Mbessa. Okay. Will it be Olips, Olispo or El Souk? Choose your next port of call on your voyage to Mbessa. All right. Uh, whenever you visit a port, new ports will become available. You can also attempt to visit every single port. For example, stop, stopping at both Olispo and El Souk. Great rewards may come to those who succeed in this, but remember to keep an eye on your morale. Oh my gosh. Well, like, shoot, I want to visit both. I kind of do. I'm going here. Draw your pistols. Olispo. A streetcar named Olispo. Or Lispo. Uh, the lights of Olispo glimmer through the spray as your uh, sailors hasten to secure their mooring. Music and merriment spill from the narrow streets, completely DMCA safe, wafting aromas of warm bread and savory fish fresh from the tide. With a thrill... With a thrill of pent-up anticipation, the sailors stream off the ship and excitedly crowd onto a pristinely new yellow tram, laughing as it rickets off of the warm night, hailed loudly by festive locals. A flurry of ample sleeves turns to them genially. genially. Boa nuit, friends. Uh, is, yeah. Boa nuit, friends. From whence does the tide bring you? Lie. We hail from... Oh, wow. Uh, we serve Her Majesty. No, I'm gonna lie. We got great diplomacy here. Let's go. <laughs> ah, marvelloso. I have kin there. Wonderful people and hard working to a fault. Come, we must drink. And I know just the place. Follow me. The sailors clamor off of the tram graciously unaccustomed to its peculiar rhythm, before following the man through a maze of passages lit by antique oil lamps hanging from balconies. Sounds like my kind of place. Stopping before a low stone arch, he reaches through the overgrown ivy, pulling open an unseen door. A flare of chattering and low lights greets you, wafting dark-scented spirits and fresh roasted food. Try the pasties de nada, our sweet secret carstery pride. And of course, our famous port. Order a generous round of port and custard pies. Uh-huh. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, we have to we have to exchange. Oh, we need to buy things. Well, do these count as oh no. I can't order anything. Oh, <laughs> I brought too many things with me. Oh no. Well, if I do this and I take the sausages instead, maybe this will be good for us. Because then we can... Oh, interesting. I think no on this. I have to refuse, unfortunately. I don't have any space for this, unfortunately. What happens if I refuse? Your trade was rejected. I know! <laughs> the innkeeper scoffs when your crew remark on the price. This is no mere city, amigos. This is Alispo, land of riches and flavor. Shh. Surely you do not expect to feast for free. There is a minute of long, awkward silence before Jose, obviously crestfallen, clears his throat. <clears throat> Clearly he had hoped his helpfulness would earn him a night of free food and drink. With a curt bow and a boa noit, he steps out into the night, and suddenly the crowd seems much less amicable, and you cannot help but wonder how deep into the city your guide has taken you. A hasty retreat is swiftly declared. Dang it! <laughs> Climb back onto the tram. Hmm. Okay. Wow. An instant save. That's always a good sign. Uh, a yellow tram lurches into movement, starting its trundling jaunt down the street. Suddenly, a cry rings out. An ornate horse-drawn horse carriage is hurtling towards the crossing. 
The look of terror on the coachman's face makes it clear he has lost control of the horse. With a shudder, the tram stops not three feet from the carriage, startling the creature to a halt. Terrified, it rears impossibly high, its hooves crashing down inches from the carriage. There is a strange garbled cry, and a man's face appears at the window, livid, and with top hat askew, pleading for help. I guess we'll just uh, attempt to calm the horse. Probably fails. We cut the reins. Then the carriage... Uh, hmm. Uh, if I cut the reins, like, it, the horse runs away, right? So, I'll cut it. I might not be able to calm the horse, right? A lanky young topman swiftly reaches into his coat for a carving knife and leaps forward. There's a flash of metal and a snap of leather before the coachman topples back into his seat. The horse whinnies and heads off down the street at a gallop, scaring passerbys out of the way. As it rounds the corner, it bowls over a young girl, sending her barreling into a pile of glaring dead-eyed cod, which collapses on her. However, only then do you remember the stricken cry you heard from inside the carriage. Rush to the girl's aid. We have medicine? We don't have any medicine. How was I supposed to know? <laughs> we don't have medicine. Uh, uh, no way prepared for this. Yeah, it's a big old gamble. We don't have any medicine. We'll rush to the carriage door. One of your crew rushes to the door, swinging it open to reveal a tall man in a ruffled frock, coat, and top hat. He is unhurt and courteously refuses the outstretched hand to step out of the carriage, taking a deep, steadying breath to gather his composure. A fine show of valor, if perhaps somewhat foolhardy. Events might have unfurled very differently. Hmm. Nevertheless, you succeed, and for this... He doffs his hat to the assembled sailors, bowing low. I, Vasco Oliveira, am much obliged to you. Am I supposed to know who that is? Surely you don't mean Oliveira, the ambassador. <laughs> yeah, wow. Okay, sure. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Are you per perhaps... What the heck? There's like multiple different things here. So apparently... Uh, He's supposed to be well-known, and we don't know which one to do, so we're going to say the ambassador. Ah, the very same. And much honored to be known by your company. It seems not so long ago I journeyed with some of your countrymen. Pray do not be startled. It is a small feat indeed for a diplomat such as myself to recognize your accent. I recall your countrymen as amiable fellows, and though we had our differences, we parted in good friendship. He walks back to the back of the carriage and opens the trunk. Please, accept this small trinket for the sake of better days and friendships not forgotten. Oh, is he going to give me something? He might give me something. Uh, after the contemporary delights of Olispo, you wonder where to head next. I mean, we have the rations as long as I don't give them up, right? So I'm going to go here and we'll see how that goes. All right, good. And then, uh, yeah, we just continue with rations here. There we go. Oh, oh my goodness. Wow. Land of lions, guys. Land of lions. We're on the case. Okay, so uh, I've got, what is this? Uh, coffee production here and here. And then Gather the roasters going to have to do work. Now they can. Excellent. I think we should, uh, uh, well, we should double this. I think we should double this. So let's double this. Uh, I'm gonna go, I think, I think I'll go here with this, I'll take a road, uh, this way, just to make sure I don't go too far with this, yep, and then we'll cover this landscape in coffee, so we'll go all the way over like this at least, and that's it, oh, 168 done, okay, um, I have to wonder if my preferences are bad here, but it did it didn't extend into this, which is where I kind of wanted to avoid. So uh, okay, and then uh, we'll do the same on this side, all right? And then uh, we make this field go this direction, if at all possible. Do we have room for houses here? There we go. Um, I'm wondering, do I have room for this? Nope. Okay. I had it down, and that's good. Okay, so we should now be able to. The amount of workers we have, anyway. 
to be able to get even more coffee beans going. And uh, then hopefully we can upgrade some of these houses soon. I did drop more fish oil. I should be making more fried plant plantains now. I should be. What's the production on this? This is a 30 second thing. And the fields are 30 seconds as well. So I should have a one to one ratio here. Interesting. So I've got three plantain fields. I've got three here. Why am I not producing enough? 30 seconds, 30 seconds, 30 seconds, three, three, and three, you know? Like I, I, I guess I, I always had, I always had one more plantain than I did. I did, yeah, I had three fields and I only had two of these before. Hmm, unless, no, these are ponchos. Okay, so I need to make, to grow more, I guess. Sugarcane is doing pretty well. I need to I need to grow more. I, I want to send coffee and rum to the old world. Because the old world is where the bulk of my money drain is. Look at this. We're red again. This is so frustrating. It's so frustrating to not know how to fix your money problems. Um so like to just constantly, no matter what you do, see big, deep red all the time, knowing that you're, you know. Like, I'm, I'm working on what they want. I'm working on their needs. They don't seem to care. <laughs> they riot instead. There's whatever, you know? And then this number is just going to get worse and worse as it goes. Here's this. Get that up, at least. Uh, we solved the riot problem. Temporarily, at least. And, like, not only that, but I'm starting to sell my access now. Like, pigs. Extra pigs we can sell. Revolt left your city in ruin. It did not... It did not. Look, it's like completely cunches. fine. Don't don't give me that. Completely good. Any buildings be upgraded? Um, I can bring more farmers into it. So like, I think that's the eater. thing, right? Like these guys want sausages. Workers do, right? But once they become artisans, Ash, they still want sausages. Once they become engineers, they no longer want sausages, right? So. Like, if I can get people tiered up, then I stop needing hey, things like fish and clothes. I don't think I need fish and clothes anymore. Because these guys don't seem to need clothes. Right? So, if I can get rid of all the workers, or if I can get rid of all the farmers, right, then I won't no need the stuff that the farmers require. Well, the stuff. workers still do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so, it looks like that's how this works. The Farmers have three basic needs. Workers maintain those needs, but then add three new things, plus education. When you upgrade to artisan, then you only retain the new things that were added with the workers, plus four new things. And then when you upgrade to engineers, you retain the four new things that artisans added, and then add four new things. So if we can just get people tiered up, we can stop with the fish. We won't need it anymore. And then we can start working on uh, other other things with that labor. But the problem with that, though, is that you still need farmers for, maybe what not for clothes, you, but you still need the farmers for sausages, you know? And then soap, which is a need that uh, these guys, artisans, will maintain. You still need workers for this. So I can't get rid of them entirely. Unless, of course, I want to just, you know, offset everything they serve and have everything shipped in from other islands, which is kind of what I was hoping to, you know, eventually be able to do, but this game's too, too stressful for me to get it done. Uh, okay, so on this island, we don't have any people. We can start a marketplace just to kind of get that going. Uh, we'll start it here. Bring this down like so. Then we'll get houses set up like this and like this. But we're running out of resources, so I guess I can't do it completely. I guess I don't. I'm not out of money though, so I can do this. There. All right. So that that takes care of some of the people living here, and uh, we're gonna need uh, lumber and stuff too. So we can get a lumberjack hut over. Oh, did I not? I didn't. I didn't. I don't have enough for a warehouse. So we're gonna make sure that this is in range. All hands up the ready. Oh, oh, you betcha. I'll have my hands ready for sure. Here we go. 
All right, so this will hopefully give us the lumber we need to continue production over there. All right, what do we got? Palm flanked ar arabesques. Arabesques? <laughs> Arabesques. I don't know. You dock at a small... I'm, I'm just tired. I think is what it is. I'm just tired. You dock at a small, lively port on the northern coast. While most of your crew plunder supplies and repair the damage suffered in a recent storm, some decide to head off to explore the local souk. Uh, streets fold and unfold into each other, bedecked in a wild array of colors and dizzyingly heady unknown scents, which so confuse your sailors that they become lost in a weave of passages. Seeing their distress, several young men in beggarly clothes offer to guide them through the maze. We have a plus 70% chance with navigation, baby. You know it. Shoo them off and dust your crew's instincts and trust your crew's instincts. Yes. Uncertain shores. It takes some observation, but your sailors soon understand the mosaic of low-hanging cloths are arranged in a specific pattern. A sharp right after a spice dealer's enthusiastic attempt to sell your crew a few years' worth of okra, uh, okra and red powders lead them to a small shadowed plaza where two musicians are strumming many-stringed zithers of rich honeyed wood. There is a peacefulness to this place that soothes your crew, and they try to engage the musicians in conversation to learn more about their culture. We have a uh, we have a comedian on board or diplomacy, so we'll try it out. Your crew barely knows enough of the language to greet the locals, let alone carry their questions. After a few long minutes of polite puzzlement, they courteously point. Uh, they courteously but pointedly turn away. Frustrated, your crew retreat to the ship, hoping the next port encountered will be slightly more cosmopolitan. Well, that sucks. Just bad RNG, I guess. Oh, man. I had the comedian and everything. All right. We can go to the ancient labyrinth, or we can go to the crocodile delta. You know it. <laughs> We're going there. Let's use up some of our rations and continue. All right. So, uh, we have uh, we have all this stuff working now. It's in range of this. So, they should deliver the wood, I would hope, to this. Yeah, there it goes. And then we'll be able to build this house and continue on with this. So, this Ship area, this island is all about just producing, I think, uh, steel and the concrete, right? We're just going to have a ton of that happening right here. That's pretty much the only thing this whole, whole place is going to focus on. And then we're going to ship it. From here, uh, probably off into potentially Arvsbin. We could send some of that steel over into here. Uh, because this is no, producing a lot of it. Don't. And I got to see whether or not we're actually losing some now. Because we were... Yes, we are decreasing now. So, uh, I think I need to return this back to the way it was. Because uh, this island is providing steel to a lot of other places. Um, so, I'm actually going to bring that back and, and do it again. That way they can continue production on that. Okay, uh, let's see. Our Farfanarf, the only island I think I've actually named <laughs> based on your comments because, uh, well, uh, I'll just, just be an honest. I haven't seen a whole lot of the comments for this. Uh, and uh, I still haven't done uh, all the things I said I would do with those. We have a lot of land here, though. Like, we're not using the land nearly the way we could. And uh, this is a place that can... Well, first off, we're going to have to upgrade that. And let's get another police station built here so we can a keep the peace. A competitor raised a settlement. Let's get that one upgraded too. There we go. Competitor raised a settlement in the old world? Wait, where? Where? It's not this one. I, I gave her permission to do this. I know that. Maybe it's... Ooh. Look how slow this is. Look at how slow this is. Against the wind, baby. Oh, you know what? We are in slow mode, though. This is regular speed. This is still pretty slow. I don't know what's happening. Look, just go around it, okay? <laughs> like, what the hell? That would piss me off, honestly. <laughs> if, the, if that was my ships, I'd be like, you guys are so stupid. Um... You know, I thought about spending some money uh, investing in my uh, competitors' islands, too. But I didn't want to, like... Ooh, Dunsbottom has a... 
uh, is now a pleasant city. Look at that. It's because it, it has all these wheat fields and stuff, but it doesn't have a whole lot. Like, there is some cows, but there's no pigs, right? So, like, there's no vulgarity. It's the pigs that make everything vulgar. And I'm ironically, I think Dunn's Bottom is going to end up being the most beautiful city we have because of that. Grease the wheels, governor. Delivery quest. What do you, what you want? I'm happy as a sand boy. Will you build us another castle? Bricks. Up, is it new? Got news? Yeah. You just want a bricks. Love is a all tanner. Ever wanted. Affects the fur dealer. Productivity plus 10%. Okay. Um, the furs. Hi. Why don't we have you? Where are you? Where are you off to? What's your route? What's your route? Yeah, you're going there. Okay. Can you hitch a ride on this guy? Hitch, hitch a ride on this boat? Oh. No, oh, you can't. Yeah. Um, well, might be able to. If I just do this, can you do that? Can you just proceed on your route or are you going to complain? I think you I think you're going to complain. Nope. Nope. I think we're good. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay. So head over to the main island and we're going to drop that guy off over there. So we're making furs over there. At least I think we are. We're still making furs over here, right? This is the sewing machines, which we're not um, not really keeping up on that as much as we could. They are draining us of all of our steel, though. Like, we, we don't have... I think, though, we could probably do away with one of these. Pollution going down? We can do away with one of these, I think. And that will also help a little bit, too, because... It reduces the pollution. Yep. So Steelworks now is only negative 20 instead of 40. This used to be negative 80. I just need to get rid of these. The rendering works are the biggest hit. And if I can reduce these at all, I'll be super happy. Um, so let me see. Soap is decreasing slightly. We're still greatly increasing with sausages. So how about we try this? Let's get some of the pigs to go away. We'll take this out. And we'll say that uh, soap factories can probably stay. I want the slaughterhouse to go as well. And then we'll remove this road. And we can put in something else here too. Slaughterhouses produce every minute, right? And the pigs were every... I think the pigs were 30 seconds. No, that's a minute too. Okay. Uh, if I get rid of this though... Because our soap was declining, and I feel like if we just get rid of some of the slaughterhouses, then I can add some more houses, of course. But also, our city just starts to look more beautiful, right? So. That's interesting. It's not letting me place it here. Oh, is it this? This. There it goes. There we go. Okay, so this comes down and around. Perfect. I mean, it's not perfect but it's pretty good uh and then we'll take uh let's put yeah we'll put two houses here too have the street come up like that all right so adding more houses making the city more beautiful getting rid of some of the pigs i want to do this it has to be slowly we can't just remove them all at once i think because like their supplies are going to start dropping and i really need to see you know whether or not we actually start dropping in supply. I think the goal here will be able to will be to get this being stable and not greatly increasing. And and then that way we find that balance. With the soap, it's decreasing slightly. And I think we see like pig farm is still, you know, just basically everything that relates with pigs needs to go. That's pretty much how this works. Just take away everything that has to do with pigs. So the rendering works. The We've soap factories. We can get rid of this. We can get rid of uh, this soap factory. So we start to remove a little bit here and there. And uh, I think the rendering works actually. It's a two to one ratio here. Rendering works is every minute. And the soap factory is every 30 seconds. So by removing one soap factory, we can get rid of two rendering works. So I will. 
All right, good. And then that also... Yep, see, now we're, we're dropping. It's under 200 now on Vulgarity. And uh, if we can just get ourselves up... A place at least one person doesn't absolutely hate. <laughs> I love it. Your ship has returned from its voyage. Oh, I love it. Lush Shield Schooner has returned from its voyage. Good. Now you get to drop off all the windows. So we're going to drop off some windows here. And then we're going to take and head up to this island and drop off the rest of the windows over here. Good. All right, this clipper is waiting on this Aye. port to clear up. This is just the, called the Nifty Mullet. <laughs> the, nifty, the Nifty Mullet. Oh, this is the best. That's the best ship name I've ever seen. Oh, my God. The Nifty Mullet. <laughs> it's so good. Um. Okay, so we've got lots of weapons. Are we we're not producing weapons here? We shouldn't have lots of weapons. Uh, I think what I want to do is bring rum. So load up 50 rum. Then come over here and load up 50 rum. And nope, not on the slot though. Yep. And load up 50 rum. And you know what? Honestly, maybe we just load up all the rum. We have... No, because I want to I wanna deliver other stuff too. Cotton needs to be delivered still. Yeah. Uh, and then, is it just the cotton? I think it's just the cotton. All of you got, so you're going to drop here, load things up, come here, load things up, then we head to the new world. The and then you're going to head back and you're going to deliver them all here. And you're going to drop them all off. Boom, 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 boom. That's your trade route. Go. Nifty mullet. My God. What's up, Land Alliance? Tomb Raiders, you are alone. Seeking the fabled Lost Necropolis. A fable that seems just about credible when eyeing the pale golden shimmer of the wind-swept dust from the seat of your cam camel. Somewhere out there in these wastes, beyond Cyclopean basalt pillars, may lie the horde of kings of old, and its greatest prize, the Vigil of Horror. A statue said to be made from the purest gold and inlaid with countless gems. Your stopover is a busy city on the Delta, not far from the supposed site of the tombs. A young woman with an academic demeanor hails you as you cross paths in the National Museum. I have found something, she says, and seek a responsible person to help the local museum recover it. Okay, well, um, hunting is a pretty good thing. And uh, <laughs> decline. And then secretly follow her in the hopes of finding the treasure. Oh, my God. <sighs> Help out of the kindness of your heart. Oh, This. This. <laughs> this. We have a hunter. Well, it's been lovely meeting you. Good day, you, you say. <laughs> Before finding a secluded corner from which you can stalk her. Noting that your foreign garb will attract a great deal of attention, you nab a big hat and try to blend in to the living extravaganza that is the city. The deceit works wonders, and all manner of sellers, merchants, and grifters brush past you like a nobody. The historian leads you to a sprawling complex of pillared halls, a great library of the House of Sands. You wait for her near a heavily ornamented pilaster. Pilaster? Pilaster? Uh, before strong-arming her into a nearby empty alley as she passes by. Help me find the treasure. Hand me the map or else. Okay. Let's be a dick in this place. We'll see what happens. Eyes blazing with hatred, she hands you the map before bolting off down the alley. Not bothering to follow, you quickly retreat to a discreet tea house some way off and examine your prize. The map is ragged and age tarnished, but readable. Strange symbols abound all over it, etched over crisis sorry, over crisscrossing lines that all lead up to a city facing a jackal's head. A note tied to the parchment with dry reeds states uh Asu Asu. I don't know. Uh, as mentioned in the Book of the Dead, 
follow the opener of paths, Anubis, the divine embalmer who holds the key. Cryptic, certainly, but not completely unintelligible. Well, we can use navigation. <laughs> Examining the map should reveal the trail. Oh my gosh. Hardly a challenge for a seasoned navigator, <laughs> obviously. The trail points to an oasis at a crossroad between two mountainous hinterlands where, legend has it, one of the entrances to the underworld lies below the water. Dark orange cliffs cast a soothing shadow over the oasis, accompanied by the joyous din of traveling merchants, wanderers, and treasure seekers alike. You look up to a high cliff and can't help but wonder where a death-defying leap into the water would take you. All right, it's time to finally, it's time to finally use faith. <laughs> I've been avoiding it. The ascent is steeper than you had anticipated, and the sheer drop equally intimidating. You stare down at the waters, and a strange faintness comes into your heart. Your breath deserts you, as trembling seizes your limbs. The rocks surrounding the basin far, far below seem jagged and cruel, and you can almost hear them calling to you, yearning for a taste of your flesh, of your marrow. Sometime later, you find yourself struggling back down the cliffside, Stopping to take a drink from the waters, you realize how tired you feel and decide it probably best if you rejoin the rest of the expedition. Man, have your faith. Where's your bread? Man, I want the, I want the, aw. Uh. <laughs> Go to the ancient labyrinth. Head onward. Onward, I say. Let's keep our morale high, though. At least we're keeping the morale high. <laughs> Oh, at least we're in high spirits with the, in the land, <laughs> the land of lions. All right, so I have now set up. Is this? Does this need? I still need oberos. Come on, oberos, oberos, oberos. I still need oberos. That requires me to have all these fried plantains and things. Such is the way, as we are going to do over here. Although, although, wait a minute. Now I have all the same fertility over here. I should probably just do this locally. Like, why ship this when you can just do something like this with a huge abundance of workers that you have? Just do it. Ta-da! And then uh, we'll get the plantains going. I, I didn't want to use this island for plantains because there's so much else I want to do here. But I have room, and I'm not using said room. So, okay. Let's do it over here. We'll set up a, a little place over here for it. So we'll set up here, and let's see what we can do. Plantain all the way up against the hillside here. Yep. Yep. And we'll just kind of go as far up the hills as we can. That sounds okay. Okay. Uh, then we'll do it again. Uh, this time we'll go maybe uh, on the opposite side. Yeah. And then we'll head over like this, all the way like so. And like, oh, cool. That's that's like the end of it. All right, fine. Um, then we'll have the road head that direction because we're probably gonna use the shoreline. But we're also gonna have the road head this way, across there, and then over like so. Okay, then we lay these in. And we finally then go in and get the fried plantains made, which is going to happen right here. And I want to put these right next to each other. I am going to move these. Like so. Uh, and then we're going to place this here. And upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. All good things. And then finally, the small warehouse... We'll go there and go. All right, so now we are making the fried plantains over here. The ponchos, I think, are getting delivered here, greatly increasing. We're delivering those uh, very fast. So um, let me just make sure we're not delivering them too fast. Are we decreasing over here now? Uh, ponchos, 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 ponchos. Where in the world are the ponchos? Okay, greatly decreasing. Yeah, too fast. Okay, uh, but can we just up it? Like, if we if we take and make another alpaca farm, and we go, uh, 
from here. Let's say we just go there, there. Uh, whoops. There. And I can't quite get that. But if I was to move you... I can't move you. Okay. We'll move you this way. Where can we move you? Uh, how about over here? Too far away. Well, it's a blueprint. So, like... It doesn't really exist yet, you know? So how about we... Man, I'm, I'm getting it in the way of all the other production by doing this. It can happen over here by the hills. Yeah, we'll, we'll do it over here. Let's go about like this. And then we'll go up one, two, three, four. And then another one here. And then we'll go one... Two, three, four. Excellent. Then this whole sequence here, we'll copy it, flip it or flip it over, and we'll paste it like here. And then the warehouse can go on this side like that. And then we just need ponchos being made. Is this a one-to-one? -one? It is. So four more, which means four more poncho makers. Uh, but we can put the poncho makers somewhere else. How about along this? This is a nice little place. I just have to upgrade this uh, warehouse. But there's enough space here to just make that perfectly done. So, yeah. One, two, three, four. Now it's a matter of whether we have enough workers. We'll drop that in. Drop this in. Drop these in. Drop these in. Make the road... Drop this road all the way over, like so. And now we're busting out the ponchos really quickly. We're already shipping them to the other islands. We just need to increase production here to offset that shipment. That shipment, And then uh, we're good to go here. Now, there's lots of oil as well. And I, you know, I still want to do that. What do we got happening here? What's happening? That alert was like the old alert for the... Yeah, I think that was the old alert from before. Upgrade you. Any other houses want to get upgraded? I'm not meeting demands. You know, sewing machines. My God. Sewing machines, of all things. Always the sewing machines. Uh, Tell you what. Why don't we temporarily... We don't have to make everything, although I do like that. Let's make sure that if we have low supply of steel we buy it so let's say anything under 69 we we get right yep i know i'm 12 and then uh that's that's good we'll do that now our sausage production is still greatly increasing so why don't we go ahead and take away one more slaughterhouse and we can remove a whole new pig pen as well so we'll destroy the pigs Destroy the slaughterhouse and add in more houses, right? Get more citizens instead. So just all along this path here and all along here. Now let's make that road there and this road here. All right. Then we can put decorations and stuff through here. And uh, honestly, ornaments and stuff to make people happy. Pleasant. Oh, somebody also uh, mentioned this in an old comment. And I'm really glad you did, because I never would have known. I uh, I made this place more beautiful before starting the last recording. I guess this is this is the same. I guess we're making this into two videos at this point. So this is, yeah, probably 17 or something now, I guess at this point. I've been playing the whole time. So, um, But these streets and stuff, right? All of these little things, wooden pavilions, photography nooks, these are all part of the, uh, the ornaments that were featured in... This Ubisoft club, right? And I thought I had to be part of Ubi Club. I see the red text and I'm like, yeah, Ubi Club, right? Well, no. Actually, these things can be placed anyway. You don't need to be part of Ubi Club anymore to do this. And I uh, I didn't know that. Um, so now I do. And they're here. And they look nice. Right? Things look nice. You can place them. So cool. Okay. Expedition requires your attention. Sorry, this music with this is... <laughs> I, I know this is supposed to be dangerous right we now. Like to think independently. <laughs> but I, 
Yeah. Anyway, the ancient labyrinth, alone in the darkness, they cannot hear her cries, just her whistles. Deep beneath this pleasant island of lavender and thyme, she has fallen to a musty, airless pit. She gathers herself and remembers the few safety matches left in her pack. You are her. She is you. Lighting a match, you are dumbstruck by a many frescoed room. Venerable and forgotten. A woman with a bull is the centerpiece. A great beast seems so vulnerable under her caress. The outline of a majestic horned door faces north, while a more humble passage leads southward. Well, uh, the grand horned door, of course. <laughs> An opening in the ground is slowly drying in the sludgy water from all parts. A fountain, perhaps? A ship dominates a large fresco on the wall, and you wonder if it ever managed to return from its voyage unscathed. A large door with a familiar pattern opens to the south. You turn to face it when you notice a second, smaller door to the west. A soft hiss. The wind, perhaps? Seems to be coming from it. I mean, why in the world would we go through the south door with a hiss? <laughs> why? Uh, uh. <laughs> uh, I can't though, I can't not choose it. Uh, fine, we're going to the hiss. Eeks. You push the broken door open. Something on the floor glistens not far off. Reflected sunlight? You close the distance hur hur hurriedly before realizing with horror that it was no light but a snake, long and sinister. I knew it. Of course. All around you, its brethren slither curiously out of the countless unseen nooks. You take a terrified step backwards and hear an angry hiss. You almost stepped on one. Advance stealthily with our hunting skill. <sighs> Stomp the ground with your might. Yeah, right. Hunting skill. It is dreadfully slow going, for the snakes curl lazily around your every footstep, intrigued as they sense the heat radiating from your body. Every step seems like an eternity, but at last you come to a short flight of steps leading up to some manner of dais. Dais? Dais? By which point the Ophidians have been overcome with disinterest. By which point the Ophidians have become overcome have been overcome with disinterest. I just love the language. Like, the language is so uncommon for my normal speech and, like, what I'm normally accustomed to. So, some of these words I'm probably not pronouncing right, but it's, it's just so poetic and it's... I'm trying, okay? You dare to light a match and something flickers in its shallow light. A statue of a woman, hand-wrapped in serpents. Hmm. Hmm. I think it's a test. Is it a test? Is it a test, huh? A statue of a woman hand wrapped in serpents. As if like, you know, you grab the statue and the serpents will wrap you, right? <laughs> Disregard. There is something about the statue that makes your hair bristle with fear. You turn aside and look to the far end of the room. An ornate fresco stretches not far off, graven above two narrow stairwells leading east and west. The fresco depicts a young woman passing a young man a ball of thread. But as you draw near, a grim growling sound echoes up from deep below. Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know. Stairwells eating, leading east and west. But if we go down the uneven steps... Hmm... Oh, no skill matters. Uh, we'll head down the even step. I, so far, it feels like everything that's dangerous is what you want to do. <laughs> it seems like. A gaping chasm stares up at you where the floor has collapsed into a distant cave far below. A smoke-tarred beam, narrow in age, stretched over the pit to the other side. Keep your back straight and swiftly cross the beam. You start across the beam, pacing a few painful feet before it creaks and sags downward. A surprise throws you off, and you fall into the pit. 
You get up painfully, battered and bruised, but very much alive. You light a match, one of the few remaining, and find yourself facing a strangely ornate door. Chestnut wood, half faded, supports an alarming, lifelike carving of a bull's head. A cavernous rumbling, or is it growling, seeps in from behind the door. We have to open the door. Yeah, it's the only, the only way, to, it's the only thing you can do. Darkness there, and nothing more. Footsteps echo against the distant vaulted ceiling. You reach for a light and find one match left. One match, and then darkness. We will advance without light? That doesn't seem very smart. But if we don't advance without light, we might be able to use it later. I'm advancing without light. We're gonna use our ears, okay? You tread a precarious path across the room, hands outstretched, fumbling for an exit. Something cold grazes your hand, and then a moist, warm breath slowly exhaled. You feel a prolonged spur jutting into the palm of your hand, extended hand. A growling, thunderous, and ominous surges into your ears and face. Flee, you fool! <laughs> Strike your last match. What's eating biscuit for? Woo! Ooh, look at this! Reward discovered. A great bovine head, cruel prolonged flares into life as you strike the match. You let out a squeal, and then something catches your eye. Moss, growing on the creature's eye, a statue, lifelike to a fault and of the finest craftsmanship. You discover that the brackish warm air gushing in from a hidden aperture in the wall on which it is set is being amplified ingeniously by the marmoreal, marmoreal? Marmoreal beast's mouth. I don't know what that word is. A momentous discovery. An entire civilization. A hidden culture. A forsaken sanctuary. An epic for ages. Oh, thrilled. You reach behind the creature's neck to a glimmer of light and pry open the brittle wall behind it to emerge into a full, into the fresh air of day. We get a bull head riton. It's equipped in a museum. Cool. Plus 10 diplomacy for this as well. If it's on an expedition, we accept. Now, we need to get rid of something, right? This gives us plus 10 diplomacy. Uh, she's uncommon, but this is rare. And, uh, like, I kind of feel like getting rid of the comedian, but because the bread serves as rations and faith, I think I'm actually going to ditch the fish. Because these are our only rations now, but at least they give faith, and uh, the fish can go, I guess. Confirm. I don't really want to get rid of the comedian. The ancient labyrinth is done. A great bovine head, cruel, prolonged... Uh, oh, we, we already read this. Cool. Continue the journey. Wow, cool. All right, awesome. All we can do is go here. The Calisma Canal. Onwards to Mbessa. All right. Whew. Makes me wonder what I could have gotten before, you know? Like, <laughs> I can't believe that entire time I was listening to that stupid whistling. <laughs> it's awesome though. It was definitely not dangerous. I gotta like try to imagine what the music for that scene would have been like if I had the music on, you know? I hate having to try to imagine it, but yeah, kinda. Let's upgrade these guys to workers. They'll pay a little bit more. And uh, I do need to keep, it, keep an eye on the sausages stuff. As we increase the number of workers here and also artisans, we're gonna start drawing from our supply here as well. Uh, so we need to keep an eye on that, but I think, guys. Oh, I don't want to end this video before the Land of Lions is done, though. Like, I gotta, I gotta have the Land of Lions completed in this video, right? Why don't we go regular speed, since we are technically profitable? As nerve-wracking as that is. Oh, yeah, right. I wonder how long that'll last, right? But you know what? We got the narwhal in here now. Oh, we got us. Can we see it? Can I? Can I see it? Let's drop down in here. I, I agree. Come on, let me... Oh! Oh, man. I wish you could get closer. This little lip here on the inside of the cage is totally unnecessary. Oh, look at these guys. That's right. They celebrate my leadership, remember? They celebrate my leadership, you guys. Yay! What is that icon? 
Is that the official flag for Dunsbottom? It looks like something with really sharp, gnarly teeth sticking its tongue out and being silly. Yeah, I think that's probably what it is. All right. Well, shoot, I want to make sure I get Land of Lions done today. At least I, I kind of wanted to. Um, so maybe we'll try our best to continue this later, I guess? Okay, I was just trying to increase, like, how many furs and stuff I'm producing over here. And uh, now he wants to go to war with me. I don't really want that right now. Um, I'm going to pay his 30000 right now. Now that has promise. Just to kind of keep him off my back at the moment. Because uh, 30000 isn't that much money to me at the moment. But I think war with the pirates right now, I'm not properly protecting my islands in the new world. I would rather not at the moment. Um, but we probably will eventually end up with war at war with him. Because he's a pirate after all. So uh, let's go ahead and upgrade this. And yeah, I need to keep playing on. I haven't really played very much. Uh, not not a whole lot of time has passed here. Admiral, Admiral. Oh man, Admiral, I love it. Uh, I want to get a little bit more housing in here, just so. Man, there's like nowhere I can really do it. They're gonna hate living here, but I'm gonna do it. Uh, wait, nope, that's not good. Hang on, move, 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 go here good all right go let's see Pressing engagement the kalisma canal uh the expedi the explosion scattered debris across the canal as your helmsman carefully steers into the nascent kalisma canal a kalisma canal a deafening blast ahead of you sends most of your crew sprawling across the deck the revolt left your city in ruin yeah 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 the initial shock overcome they really don't like uh <laughs> <laughs> they really don't like the propaganda. The initial shock overcome, they rush to their stations and pull the ship into a crawl, bringing it to rest mere feet away from the list uh, from the listing. Flame wrecked carcass of a ship. Doubtless, it will be days before all is clean, uh, cleansed, and navigation can resume. One of your sailors furrows their brow. Isn't it odd that there ain't no one in the water? Odd indeed. In fact, there's no trace at all of an explosion of the exploded crew uh, ship's crew. An irresistible mystery. Well, we're definitely using naval power here. 65% plus 65%. One of your sailors recalls observing the ship while waiting to enter the canal a few hours ago, noting its peculiar propeller. Your crew sift through the wreckage in search of the apparatus and find it half torn from the stern. It is hauled aboard where one of your tradesmen examines it. You see the blades? Old models only ever fitted to a handful of ships, and only two of them so big. My guess is they're from the Innocents. Except I heard the Crown bought her for salvage not six months past. His words slowly sink in. Can the Queen have conspired to sabotage the canal? If local authorities hear of this... Hmm... Most people have a right to know. <laughs> I do. <laughs> it is a difficult decision to make, but your crew decide to share the information with uh, the Kalisma authorities, believing no loyalty should take precedence over righting an injustice. The canal master thanks your captain profusely, co commending his honesty and insisting that your crew be rewarded for their integrity. Before taking his leave, your captain extracts a promise from the grateful official that no mention will be made to anyone as to the source of the information. Okay, pretty cool. Uh, Savannah or Holy City? I feel like we're going to leave the Holy City for last. Let's go to Savannah. We are pretty good on a morale here. We're doing really good on this. I'm... Uh, I'm I'm, I'm really happy with this, the progress of Land of Lions so far. But unfortunately, this video is celebrate your too leadership. long, right? It's too long. So we're going to have to come back for the next one if you want to see the conclusion for Land of Lions. Yes, yes, this is going to be a to-be-continued video. So I hope you'll come back and join me for that. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you like the video, please do me a favor, all right? Leave a like, leave a comment engage with it that's how i know you like it that's how i know you want more anno we will see you next time bye bye